I'm Dr. Keith C. Ferdinand, Professor of Medicine at the Tulane University School of Medicine in Cardiology at the Tulane Heart and Vascular Institute. Today I'm talking about diabetes and cardiovascular care. If you look at persons who have diabetes, specifically type 2 diabetes, the number one cause of death is not poor control of glucose, but actually ischemic heart disease. Persons with diabetes die more from ischemic heart disease than from any other cause. If we look at the control of glucose itself, it may have benefits specifically for microvascular disease, that is, retinopathy, kidney disease, and maybe even peripheral arterial disease. But for macrovascular disease, major heart attacks, and dying from heart failure, this is the most common cause of death for adults with diabetes. Some of the newer data using, for instance, the SGLT2 inhibitors with Impareg show that there is a decrease in overall cardiovascular death, total mortality, and a decrease in hospitalization for heart failure. In the same lines with Canada flows and in the CANVAS study, there was a 40% decrease in the aggregate of a progression to end-stage renal disease, renal failure, and death. Therefore, the appropriate treatment of persons with type 2 diabetes is more than just simply controlling glucose. In fact, some of the studies now suggest that there will be a worldwide epidemic of diabetes, as many as 400 million people across the globe by 2025. There will not be enough endocrinologists to actually control this particular condition. Unfortunately, racial and ethnic minorities are often underrepresented in clinical outcomes trials. Therefore, I led an initiative to have a study done in a high-risk population who had both hypertension and type 2 diabetes, African Americans. In this particular study with 150 persons who had uncontrolled diabetes with a hemoglobin of A1C from 7 to 11 and uncontrolled hypertension with systolic blood pressure of 140 to 180, we enrolled patients and randomized them to either placebo or implicofosing starting at 10 milligrams and increasing to 25 milligrams. The patients then had ambulatory blood pressure monitoring done. Because empagliflozin is an anti-diabetic medicine, the primary outcome was 24 weeks decrease in hemoglobin A1C, which was met from a baseline hemoglobin A1C of approximately 8.5 with a decrease of 0.78. Nevertheless, there were pre-specified incomes. Nevertheless, there were pre-specified outcomes specifically related to blood pressure. Using ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, which is a valid way of measuring the effects of blood pressure for any medication, we saw a statistically significant decrease of approximately 6 millimeters in the systolic blood pressure on ambulatory blood pressure monitoring at 12 weeks, which was maintained for 24 weeks. The clinic blood pressure was decreased approximately 4 millimeters of mercury. This was not statistically significant, but clinically meaningful. Even more importantly, after 24 weeks, the clinic blood pressure also decreased statistically. There was also a loss in body weight with empagliflozin. Therefore, the SGLT2s may be beneficial in African American patients who have both hypertension and diabetes. While not a cardiovascular outcomes trial, our abstract published in JAK suggested that there may be a real benefit in blood pressure reduction and control of glucose with the bonus of some degree of weight loss using empagliflozin, an SGLT2 inhibitor in African Americans who had both hypertension and type 2 diabetes. This is an important study. Despite its small sample size and the fact that there were no cardiovascular outcomes, it suggests that empagliflozin can be used safely in this population. African Americans are known to have an increase in hypertension and comorbid diabetes. And in fact, 80% of persons who have type 2 diabetes also have hypertension, and this is even higher in the black population. In the REGARDS study, a large southern cohort of over 30,000 persons, only 30% of African Americans who had both diabetes and hypertension had their blood pressures controlled to less than 130 over 80. Implicofosin has been shown to be beneficial in the Impareg study. Nevertheless, in the study which we just completed, 
control of cardiovascular risk, specifically diabetes, glucose, and blood pressure can be used in this particular population. I'm Dr. Keith C. Ferdinand talking about diabetes and its relation to cardiovascular care.